marry my daughter, but she's only three years old. In Sierra Leone, where some marriages are arranged, a young girl is chosen by the family of a man, sometimes 20 years her senior. She is obviously not ready for marriage, so after reaching puberty, she is sent to live with the husband's family. His mother or another female family member teaches her the proper procedures for cooking, raising children, cultural traditions, gardening, and possibly running her own small business. Finally, the years of training come to an end and the day of testing arrives as she begins her new life as a wife. A young rice plant is thrust into the mucky soil at the onset of rainy season. It is nurtured and weeded, beat upon by the torrential rains and scorching sun. After eight months, it is cut and hung to dry. After more drying, the end product is produced. Will it pass the test? Mm. Like the young girl and rice plant, the Wesleyan Church of Sierra Leone was begun 104 years ago. It was planted at a sacrificial cost to many. Since that time, missionaries have continued to water and nurture, teach and train in the areas of evangelism, church planting, theological education, medicine, primary and secondary education, and support ministries. Though the day of complete autonomy has not yet arrived for the church, recent events in this small country on the west coast of Africa have forced a reassessment of the relationship of the missionary and the church. A challenge and a time of testing. On April 29, 1992, a military coup shook this country of four million people. The U.S. Embassy strongly urged all Americans to evacuate due to the breakdown in civil order. After frantically packing one small bag each, tearful last-minute goodbyes were said to bewildered friends and co-workers. Once seated inside the belly of an American military transport plane, a numbness overcame us all. Hundreds of questions race through our minds. Will our friends starve, be killed, witness atrocities? What will happen to the 104 years of Wesleyan church work? The 117 churches, the 187 preaching points, Kamakui Wesleyan Mission Hospital, the medical dispensaries, the Bible schools at Bendembu and Jui, the primary and secondary schools, the thriving women's ministries. God, you say in your word to consider it joy when we face trials of many kinds, because the testing gives us strength and deepens our faith that we may be mature and complete. God, please help the church and us through this time of testing. As we sat in the plane, we were reminded of a time of testing we had already faced in Sierra Leone. A severe case of hepatitis A sent me home for three months, but the Lord was faithful to heal. And several months later... Get down, Jody! Get away from that window! But they're climbing over our gate! In the middle of the night, five darn men broke into our home and robbed us at gun and knife point. God's promise of being our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble, was put to the test. And he was faithful to send his angels to protect us from harm. During the uncertain days in the U.S. after the evacuation, he was again faithful. Upon our return to Sierra Leone, and to our great delight, we learned that the time of testing had proven the maturity and strength of the Wesleyan Church. Even the mission hospital at Kamakui had functioned effectively. My assistant, Abu Bangura, had proven himself faithful in handling many of my mission responsibilities in our absence. He had passed through a time of testing while we were away. As a result, today he is able to take on more responsibility as he assists me with my work. 
We are in a partnership. He and I are the feet for others. With Abu busy clearing missionary and hospital supplies at the port, I still have plenty to do. Besides the accounting for the various mission stations and that of our 15 missionaries, as with Abu, much of my time is spent out of the office. These duties include buying airline tickets, large quantities of rice and fuel, clearing and purchasing new mission vehicles, and handling important documents with government offices. I realize that the administrative work I do in Freetown allows my fellow missionaries up country to continue in their areas of ministry without breaking away from their busy tasks. This work also brings me in contact with businessmen, many of whom are Muslims and Hindus, and gives me the chance to share about Christ. My responsibilities extend to helping audit the books of the Westland Church of Sierra Leone and providing guidance in accounting procedures and office management helping them to be more self-sufficient. I also assist with the complexities of building projects. Can you imagine ordering hand-sawn boards from a distant village? Speaking of boards, I also serve on the local and district church boards. A refreshing time for me is a weekly Bible study with local Westland pastors. We are encouraged together as we share prayer concerns and pray for each other. My days are spent doing the things a mother of two active preschoolers does. Megan, four, and Michael, two, are always finding new ways to surprise mommy. As manager of our mission guest house, located five miles across this capital city, I try to make a home away from home for our missionaries, work teams, and other visitors when they come to Freetown. Kevin and I are both active in the Lumley Wesleyan Church near our home. I enjoy teaching the women crafts they can sell and participating in the Women's Institute. Just recently, we formed a choir at church, which I direct. We enjoy an occasional Saturday afternoon as a family on the nearby beach with our kids. We all enjoy playing in the sand and catching a wave. What does the future hold for the church in Sierra Leone? There will certainly be other times of testing. The coup ushered in more uncertainties of political, social, and economic unrest. But it was also a catalyst for evaluating the maturity of the Wesleyan Church of Sierra Leone. We are excited about the strength of the church. Under the leadership of our national superintendent, Martin Croma, the six district superintendents, and 96 pastors, Seventeen new churches have been planted in the last four years. Their goal is to start 60 additional churches by the year 2000. Sierra Leone is continuing to undergo a time of testing as social and political issues, along with an ongoing civil war threatened to disrupt the country. In the midst of this, we are reminded of the promise of Jesus Christ to always be with us and never forsake us. You can be a vital part of the work in Sierra Leone. Your prayers are needed for the church that they will continue to grow in faith, wisdom, and strength. Bible college students are needed to fill the pulpits of the new churches being started. Pray for the entire staff at Comiqui Wesleyan Hospital working as a team in training doctors, nurses, and dispensary workers. With the ever-increasing cost of living in a hyperinflated economy, your faithfulness is vital. Wesleyan World Missions is a faith mission. Missionaries are able to stay on the field only because of your giving. You can have the opportunity of seeing firsthand your mission funds and prayers at work. Jody and I are missionaries today as a result of participating in short-term missions trips while in college. God may be calling you to use your skills in short-term or full-time service. There are many areas of ministry, work teams, medical, educational, and business. Each of us face times when our faith is put to the test. With your partnership and God's help, the Wesleyan Church of Sierra Leone will stand strong and pass through this time of testing with victory!